All right, you guys ready, guys? So all of this, hopefully the majority is uh, review, but I did, I know some of you said that it was not review. So uh, I will try to be as detailed as possible uh, uh, to as much as I can. You know what, I'll try to be, I'll try to give as much detail as I can. So this is what you call rational functions, guys. Rational functions, uh, they're called rational functions because of the word ratio, right? You got something on the top, something on the bottom. Usually you have a, you know, you have a polynomial on the top, you have a polynomial on the bottom. You can't have radicals, uh, inside your variable can't have a radical. So if you have something like x to the two thirds, alright guys, focus, 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 over plus five over x to the four fifth plus three, that is not a rational function by definition. Uh, so you need to have polynomials in the top and the bottom, numerator and denominator. All right, so in the very first two questions, they're going to go very slow. They're, they're just asking, it says, for which values of x and the expression undefined. So all that means is, where is this expression undefined? So you remember basic laws, can you divide by zero? No, you can't. If you, if you find a way to divide by zero, you'll win the Nobel Prize. Uh, you know, in math or acad academia. Uh, so what I would do is I would factor, I would, you don't have to factor the numerator, but uh, you can if you want to. That's the difference of squares there, if you want to get that situated. The bottom is a difference of squares as well, x plus 7, x minus 7. And you're defined everywhere except at x equals negative 7 and at x equals 7. Because those two will tell you uh, those two will give you a zero in the denominator. Does that make sense, guys? So it's a, for which value of x is expression undefined? Oh, okay, so they want to know where you're undefined. So these are my two values, negative 7 and 7. Sorry, I didn't read the question properly. Cool or not cool? All right, next one. For which values of x is the expression undefined? Same thing, same thing. You set the denominator equal to 0. 7x minus 21 equals 0. 7x equals 21, when you move the 21 to the other side of the equal sign, divide both sides by 7x equals 3. By the way, that's also a vertical asymptote, if this were a function, if I call that f of x equals, or y equals, that x equals 3 would be a vertical asymptote. Yay or nay? And then number three, it says identify all vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Why? Okay, before we even get go there into this function, uh, what did you guys call this function when you guys were in Algebra 2? Did you call it the inverse function or the reciprocal function? You guys remember? Inverse? Okay. Yeah, because you can call it the inverse function. You know, it's, it, that's a function that's inverse of itself. If we switch to x and the y and solve again for y, you'll get the same thing. Uh, you have... A vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And this function looks like this, where this coordinate is 1, 1, and it looks like this. And that negative 1, negative 1. And if you were to reflect it across the line y equals x, it would be the same, you'd have the same, same, uh, same curve. So I want you to notice that the inverse function or reciprocal function has no x-intercepts. And no y-intercepts. But as soon as you start moving it up, down, left, right, you're probably going to have one, sometimes both. It, it just depends. Cool or not cool? All right. So let's see what this does. So look, that minus 3... What does it do to this parent function? It moves it moves it down how many times? Three. So at negative three, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote. In this case, you do not cross a horizontal asymptote. It is possible to cross horizontal asymptotes. Uh, not in the way this looks, but you can have rational functions that cross horizontal asymptotes. Uh, that's, it's an asymptote because that's my end behavior, right? As x is really, really large, my y value converges on that. And then I have another, I can't have a zero in the denominator, so x equals 3 is a what? Not a whole. Vertical asymptote. It's only a whole if you can have a factor on the top that cancels the factor on the bottom. Don't worry, we'll talk about that. So go to, ne uh, go to positive 3 and t uh, do a vertical line up and down.
So this one is going to have, let's see, is it going to have a white intercept? Uh, yes. This one is going to have a y intercept. So how do I find the y intercept? Whenever you cross the y axis, what's the x value? Zero, guys. Yeah, be brave. It's okay. There's a safe space. So I'm going to write y intercept. Insert x equals zero. So I'm going to go negative one over zero minus three minus three. So negative divided by negative is a positive. Yeah, your name. So I get one third minus three. So I get negative. Let's see. What's that? Negative two and two thirds. Nope. Negative. Oh, yeah, it is right. I don't know what, what was wrong with me there. All right, so that's my y-intercept. So I'm going to go to negative 2.66. It doesn't have to be perfect. So negative 2.66 is like right smack there. That little blue dot. Pretty close. All right, x-intercept. The x-intercept is whenever the y-value is what? All right here. Yeah, x-intercept is when y value is 0, is when y equals 0. So I set the expression equal to 0. 0 equals, don't worry, guys, we'll be done pretty quickly, negative 1 over x minus 3 minus 3. I know some of you can probably do this in your sleep. I'm going to move that negative 3 to the other side. 3 equals negative 1 over x minus 3. Some of you can probably look at it and get an x value right off the bat. And if you can do that, that's fine. Go for it. I would go ahead and if you want to solve for x, like, you know, the way we've always done it traditionally, multiply by the denominator. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, like this. See? So now you're going to have, let's see, 3x minus 9 equals negative 1. I move the 9 to the other side. 3x equals, let's see, plus 9, 8. And I divide both sides by 3. x equals 8 over 3. So not quite 3. Hmm, hold on. I want to make sure of that. Um, I'm just going to do this here on the side real quick. Negative 1 over 8 thirds minus 3 minus 3. So times 3, uh, that's going to be 9 over 3. 9 times 3, 27 over 3. So negative 1 over 27, 9, 8 minus 27. What's that? Negative 19 over 3, 3. Hmm. I don't see it. Did I mess up, guys? Do you see an error anywhere? Uh, let me check real quick. 0, move the 3, that's correct, times x minus 3. So 3x minus 9 equals negative 1, plus 9, plus 9, 8. Nope, everything looks correct to me. x equals 8 thirds, so quite close to 3, but not quite. 3, 6, like, boom. Okay. I'm going to put two points in here, guys. I'm going to get really close to the vertical asymptote, but x equals 3. So I'm going to plug in x equals 2. So here's my coordinate. 2 comma, if I plug in a 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is a positive 1. 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. So I'm going to go to 2, negative 2, and I'm going to put a point. That's just to get a point so I can see how I'm going to graph. I, I picked it. I chose x equals 2. I said the, the directions were I'm going to go one away from my vertical asymptote. I'm going to do the same thing to the right side of the asymptote, my vertical asymptote. So I'm going to choose a value. What value am I going to choose if I'm one away from the vertical asymptote? x equals 4 because it's easy to do. 4 minus 3 is 1. Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So I'm going to have 4 comma negative 4. So I'll go to 4, negative 4, 1, here it is, point. And here's how it looks. Here it is in black. I don't like that it's super close, but that's fine. 
and you get close to the x-axis, I mean to the x-axis, to the horizontal asymptote, but you don't cross it. And it'll look like this. I don't see any mistakes. I think where it looks good. How do we feel, guys? Do you feel okay? Ask me, ask me, miss. Don't worry, we got another shot. Maybe that one was... Okay, maybe we... Maybe you thought it was hard. Look, guys, that negative, all it did was reflect across the x-axis. So now it was, in the, it was in quadrant one, now it's in quadrant four. It was in quadrant three, now it's in quadrant two. And then, of course, my shift, three down. So... And I shouldn't say quadrants because it's not quite an, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. Like if that vertical line was your y-axis and that horizontal line was like your x-axis. Um, yeah. Are we okay, guys? Nothing crazy? Okay. Here we go. Let's go to number four. Don't worry. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make it simple. What does this minus one do to the parent function? One down. So draw a horizontal line at negative one. And then where do I have, where's my vertical asymptote at? Negative one as well. I'm going to pick a value. Let's see. I want my y intercept. So I'm going to plug in x equals zero. x equals zero. So if I plug in x equals zero, here's what I get. Uh, 4 divided by 0 plus 1. So 4 divided by 1 is 4. And then 4 minus 1 is 3. So go to 0, 3, put a point. Now I'm going to get my, what am I going to get? I'm going to get my x-intercept. To get my x-intercept, I'm going to make y equals 0. So here we go, guys. 0 equals 4 over x plus 1 minus 1. Is everyone okay? Move the one to the other side. One equals four over x plus one. I know some of you can probably look at this and be like, well, child, the only way to get a one is if x equals three. Because if x equals three, three plus one is four. Four divided by four is one. Do you guys see that? You don't have to do it that way. I'll show you in a little bit. So three, zero is a point. You could have, you could have distributed, multiplied by x plus one, multiplied by x plus one, and then you would have had this x plus 1 equals 4 and then just drop the parentheses drop it drop it low okay that was not funny sorry x equals 3 cool all right we're done uh well i guess we're not done now i want to choose a point to the left of x equals 1 i'm going to choose x equals negative 2 so i'm choosing that i'm choosing a point that's one away at, well the where the horizontal displacement is one away from my x-axis. Cool? From my vertical asymptote. All right. Negative 2. So 4, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1. Negative 5. Negative 2, negative 5. Yep, I better be down there. And here it is. Here's how it looks more or less. It looks something like this. It's in burnt orange. It's not perfect, but that's fine. And something like that. I probably could have made it better by getting more points, but that was enough for me. How do we feel, guys? <laughs> there it is. That's, we, did, we just finished the hardest part. The rest will be easier. All right. Find all vertical asymptotes of the following function. So remember, guys, vertical asymptote deals with the denominator. I know where everyone's tired. It's already late in the day. Uh, so factor everything out. So two numbers that multiply give you negative 36 and add up to a negative 5. It's not 6 and 6. What else gives you 36? 9 and 4. And yeah, the difference between 9 and 4 is 5. So the 9 has to be negative, and the 4 has to be a positive. Do you guys see how we did that? Okay, in the bottom, factor out a 2, and you get x plus 4. Do I have factors that cancel out? If you have factors that cancel out, that is where you have a what? Hole. So you have a hole at x equals negative 4. 
By the way, if you want the Y value of that hole, here's the Y value, guys. Hold on, guys. Here's the Y value of that hole. Just plug in a negative 4 into whatever you have left. Negative 4 minus 9, that's negative 13. So negative 13 over 2. That's the hole, which is the same as a removable discontinuity. Have you guys ever heard that word before? Oh. <laughs> Removable discontinuity is a whole. But that's not the question they ask. They ask, do I have any vertical asymptotes? Do you have anything in the denominator that, can, that I can set equal to zero? No, I don't have it anymore. So none. No vertical asymptotes. Yeah, you already canceled out your factor. There's nothing else that would give me a vertical asymptote. Perfect. Cool or not cool? All right, guys, number six. Find all vertical asymptotes with the following function. I'm going to factor out a two in the numerator, and I'm going to have, yeah, I can factor out a two. And I'm going to have 3x minus 1. So it goes into six three times. And there's nothing to factor in the denominator. And I say f of x equals that. All right, this one does have a vertical asymptote. We're at x equals negative 4 is a vertical asymptote. Whenever you see the acronym or abbreviation VA, it stands for vertical asymptote. Cool or not cool? Cool. There it is. We'll go to the next one, guys. Don't worry. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. <laughs> Number 7. Find all holes of the following function. Write your answer as a coordinate point in simplest form. If no hole exists, write none. All it means, simple in form, means reduce. That's all it means. Reduce it. So if you get 4 over 8, reduce it to a half. All right. Let's factor out 2 parentheses x minus 2 in the bottom. OMG, Chav, I don't know how to do this. This is where I get stuck. I don't know. All right. You guys ready to do prerequisite work? Everything that you see in black is not part of this problem. It's just stuff that you should have learned last year. There's two ways. Relax. And rel I, I know that sounded really bad. I apologize. Relax. It's not difficult. Let me do first something that I think everyone can understand. Not that, okay, yeah, I'm sounding real bad today. I'm not judging you. I'm not insulting your intelligence. I promise. All right, here we go. All right, guys, focus, 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 focus. This is the AC method. So what is the AC method? Whenever you hear AC method, all quadratics are in this form, right? So the AC method means do the product of A and C and A and C. So this is a 3, this is a 4. So on the side, I go 3 times 4 is, or 3x squared times 4 is 12x squared. And then I say this, two numbers that when I multiply give me 12x squared, but add up to a negative 8. Negative 2x, I'm going to put the negative 6x first. Negative 6x and negative 2x. See, negative 6x and negative 2x will multiply, give me a positive 12x squared. But when I add them, it gives me negative 8x. Do you guys see that? So then you substitute. So let's see if you guys remember this. 3x squared minus 6x minus 2x plus 4. It, by the way, this is called, now it's called factoring by grouping. But, but it's still part of the AC method. Group the first two. Group the second two. Are we still okay? What can I factor out of the first two terms? A uh, 3 and an x. I heard someone say 3x. When you factor out the 3x, you're going to have x minus 2. That's the goal. You want another x minus 2. So what can I factor out of the last two terms? A negative 2. And look at this. x minus 2. And now I know that's a product, but think of this as a term, and think of this as another term. So look what they both have in common. They both have in common the, the factor x minus 2. Do you guys see that? So you can factor out the x minus 2, and when you do that, the only thing you have left is a 3x minus 2. Chop, why does this work? It works because, look at this, guys. Look why it works. 3x times x, 3x squared. 3x times negative 2, negative 6x. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. And this right here is this. Do you guys see how that works? So this is now going back to this. 
Here's what I have in the denominator. 3x minus 2, x minus 2. Yay or nay? Okay. Here's method 2. If you just, this is called guess and check. This is just, everything in black is not, is just algebra 2 skills. This is guess and check. You go like this. You just do it right off the bat. And you say, two numbers that give me 3x squared. The less the numbers are, the better. The only two numbers that give you 3x squared is 3x and x. I'm still doing the factoring, guys, just so you guys can see all the different ways. Cool or not cool? What about this one? Two numbers that give you positive 4. Well, that one's going to be trickier because you can either do 2 times 2 or 4 times 1. So let me do a wrong one. Just listen, guys. Just listen. Let me do a wrong one on purpose. 4 and 1. Then you would say, okay, does that up to a negative 8? I go 3x times 1. That's 3x. 4 times x. That's 4x. The sum of those 4 plus 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 7. That's not 8. Do you see how that doesn't work? And then you're like, well, what about the other one? What if this was the, f the 1 and this was the 4? Uh, well, then that's 1 and that's tw uh, 12. And 12 plus 1 is 13. So that doesn't, that doesn't work. Do you guys see that? So then you're like, okay, so then what about 2 and 2? So then you erase that. You put a 2. You put a 2. And then you go 3x times 2. That's 6x. 2 times x. That's 2x. And the sum of 6x and 2x is 8x. And then you look at it, and you're like, oh, that's negative. So they both have to be negative. And that's what you call guess and check. And you spent like three weeks on that, just doing that alone, perfecting it. Do you guys remember that? Oh, okay. Well, that's called factoring by grouping, and that one's called guess and check. All right, going back to the question, once you've done all that, once you've done all that, are there factors that cancel? Are there factors that cancel, guys? Which ones? Because those cancel, that is where you have a what? A hole, wherever that expression equals zero. So you have a hole at x equals 2, not negative 2, at x equals 2. Yay or nay? Once you know that's where the hole is, you want to find the y value. So here it is. You just plug in the x equals 2 in there. So 2 comma... 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. 2 divided by 4 is a half. Close it. There's the hole. Or the removable discontinuity. Yeah, I mean, I got, maybe I should say removable discontinuity because the other one might sound a little too close to something. Okay. Cool or not cool? Ask me, ask me. Did I mess up? I put the 2 into whatever I have left. Are we okay, guys? All right, here we go. This one here. Don't worry. We're going to go faster because we're not going to be doing all that mumbo jumbo. Find all holes. Ready? Two numbers that when I multiply, give me negative 8 that add up to a negative 7. Don't worry. We're almost done, guys x oh man we don't know that one no it does 8 and 1 x minus 8 x plus 1 if the coefficient in front of the x squared is a 1 you just do two numbers that multiply to give you the 8 but add up to the, the 1 in the middle negative 7 alright in the bottom I would factor out a 3 and you get x squared minus 3x minus 10 so here it is two numbers I have a 1 in front of the x squared so you can just do this Two numbers that multiply to give you negative 10, but add up to a negative 3. Yeah. X minus 5, X plus 2. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, and negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. You can only do that, you can only do that when you have a 1X squared. If you have a number in front of the X squared that is not a 1, you have to do either AC method, uh, guess and check, or maybe even the quadratic formula if you want. Yay or nay? Okay. Does anything cancel out? No, nothing cancels out. So no holes. <laughs> no, we're, we're saying holes, guys. All right. Cool or not cool? Oh, the three's still there. No, the three's still there. It's important because that function is it does have a three. All right. 
All right, here we go, guys. Horizontal asymptote. You know what? Let's do the rules first. All right, don't worry, guys. Let me just do a concept really fast for you guys. Yeah, not on number nine. All right. Real quick, real quick, guys. I need your, your focus real quick. If you spit in the ocean, does the ocean rise? No. If all of you, if I take the whole, all of YW Lake, and I take you guys to Canyon Lake, and I tell you guys, spit in Canyon Lake, will Canyon Lake rise? No. Chav, what are you talking about spit in ocean? How is this relevant to math? I'm trying to talk about end behavior. So what takes precedence? End behavior. The spit compared to the ocean is negligible. So when I when I foil this out, let's see, x squared, 9 minus 2, that plus 7x, 9 times 2, minus 18. When I foil this out, the x squared is the one with the highest degree. So that's the one you focus on because that's ocean. And 7x minus 18 is like spit. Only as x approaches infinity. End behavior. I'm only talking about, this only applies to horizontal asymptotes, guys. Only to horizontal asymptotes. Does that make sense? All right. So check it out. The numerator, x squared, the end behavior of the denominator is 2x. This is end behavior, EB. What is growing faster, the numerator or the denominator as x gets larger? The numerator. So this is not, you're not bounded. You're not converging to a number, guys. So no horizontal asymptote because you're not bounded. I don't want you to be a robot. The, yeah, no horizontal asymptote. You're not bounded. Chav, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, here's what I'm talking about. All right, don't worry. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you exactly what I'm talking about right here. Really fast. Really fast. All right, give me... All right, guys, real quick, real quick. Give me... Uh, Give me what I had uh, in the numerator. What was it? X plus what? Oh, no. Give me the whole expression. X plus 9. X plus 9. X minus 2. And on the bottom, what do I have? X plus 7. Okay. All right, guys. Focus, 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 guys. I know you may be tempted to cancel out the X plus 9s, and I guess that's okay. But look, check it out. I'm going to set my table to ask. All right, guys, focus, focus, focus. And look at this. I'm going to plug in a 0, and I'm going to get a number, negative 1. I'm going to plug in a 10, and I'm going to see what happens as I get bigger and bigger. I get 4. I'm going to plug in 100, and I get 49. I'm going to plug in 1,000, 499. I'm going to plug in 10,000. Look what's happening. Are you bounded? No, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's why you have no horizontal asymptote because as S gets larger, you're not approaching anything. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Chav, when am I ever going to use horizontal asymptotes ever in my life? For you people that are going to be medical professions, there's something called steady state. You know, uh, have you talked about half-lives, chemical reactions, you engineers, signal analysis? This is like, yeah, this is relevant, guys. All right, here we go. Let's go to the next one. Check this one out, guys. So let's see if we can come up with a rule. So look, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put it in here. So let's see if you guys can figure this out. All right, guys, focus, focus, focus. Don't worry. We're, we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. There's the last one. Give me my numerator of the next question, guys. 5x plus 6. And what do I have in the denominator? x plus what? 2 and... 5x plus 6. Okay, check it out, guys. Remember, we're talking about end behavior. I'm going to click on table again. Oh, you know what? Uh, give me the death. Let me, I'm going to, I'm going to make it, give me, uh, I'm going to make it, give me a decimal. So you guys can see it easier. Okay, check it out, guys. Guys, guys, focus real quick. Look, I'm going to plug in a zero. I get 0.5. I'm going to plug in 1. I get 0.333. I'm going to plug in 10. I get 0.08. I'm going to plug in 100. Or uh, two more zeros. I'm going to plug in 100. I get 0.009. I'm going to plug in 1,000. I get that e to the negative 3 means there's three zeros in front of the 1. 
point zero 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 one. What's happening? It's approaching something. It's not. What is it approaching? Zero. Do you guys see that? So for this one, you're gonna say horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Why? I don't want you to be a robot. Don't worry, I'm going to give you the rules right now, but I don't want you to be a robot. End behavior. Look at the behavior, guys. In the numerator, I have 5x. In the denominator, I have 5x squared. The degree in the bottom is growing faster than... Uh, okay, the degree... The bottom is growing faster than the top. Check this out. The 5s cancel out. And one of these x's cancel out, and I have 1 over x. This is my end behavior. Chav, what do you mean it's growing faster? Look, if x equals 1... 1 divided by 1 is 1. If x equals 10, 1 divided by 10 is 0.1. If x equals 100, 1 divided by 100 is 0.01. If x equals 1,000, 1 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.001. Look what's happening to the output. It just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's approaching what number? 0. That's why y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote, guys. See, you no longer have to depend on any rules. You're not a robot. Now you're using your critical, you're using your, your, your brain. Isn't that cool, guys? All right, let me give you the rules, because I know some of you guys, I want the rules. All right, first bullet, and let me write it in purple, because it's a pretty color. If degree of denominator, if highest degree, put the word highest. If highest, just, in, just put a little carrot symbol and put the word highest. If highest degree, yeah, you guys get so mad. Like, <laughs> if highest degree of denominator is larger than highest degree of numerator, comma, horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. That's first bullet. There's three bullets. If highest degree of denominator is larger than highest degree of numerator, horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Done. Second bullet. Let me do it in burnt orange for your for you longhorns. If highest, all right, guys, focus, focus, focus. If highest degree of numerator is larger than highest degree of denominator, comma. No horizontal asymptote. Yeah, just like letter number nine, the highest degree of numerator was two, the highest degree of the denominator was one. If the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, no horizontal asymptote. Okay, one more. I'll put it... Do you guys want me to uh, repeat anything? Well, one last one. If highest degree of that's not of, of numerator is same as highest degree of denominator denominator comma coefficient and I'll I'll, I'll put an example right now. Coefficient of coefficient, the number in front of the. You, you, I'll, I'll do an example. Coefficient of highest degree of numerator. I'm just going to use num for numerator. Divided by coefficient of highest degree of denom. That's the denominator. I'll read it again. So here's what you should have written. If highest degree of numerator is same as highest degree of denominator, comma, coefficient of highest degree of numerator divided by coefficient of highest degree of denominator. Don't worry. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you two examples. And I'll write it in... I'll write it in black. No, no, no. I'll write it in burnt orange. And don't worry. This will be the last two examples, guys. And we're done. And it'll be simple examples. Example one. If I have this, f of x equals x squared plus 3, let me erase this line up here, x squared plus 3x plus 2, 
divided by 5x squared plus 10x plus 5. We're talking about, we're just talking about horizontal asymptotes. I just made it up. Guys, guys, focus, focus, focus. We're almost done. I promise you we're almost done. What's the highest degree of the numerator? What's the highest degree of the numerator, guys? 2, x squared. What's the highest degree of the denominator? 2. And according to this third bullet, it says the coefficient. What's the coefficient in front of the x squared in the numerator? 1. What's the coefficient of the denominator? The highest degree. So horizontal asymptote for this one is 1 fifth. Done. Because that's what it's approaching. You know what? I want to actually put it in the calculator just because I don't want you guys to be robots. So uh, give me back what I just wrote there. Y equals, what was the, uh, what did I have on the top? I had what? X squared <laughs> plus 3X plus 2. Check it out, guys. Check it out. Don't worry. We're almost done. What do I have in the denominator? <laughs> guys, guys, guys. We're almost done, guys. Come on. Focus, focus. Plus 5? Okay. Check this out, guys. I want you to, I want you to see this. One fifth is the same thing as 0.2, yes or no? Look at this. I'm going to make x approach infinity or get really large. x equals 1, 0.3. x equals 10, 0.21. x equals 100, 0.202. x equals 1,000, 0.2002. x equals 10,000. I think I'm about 100,000. It says 0.2, but it's not really 0.2. Look, if I hover over it, 0.2000001999988. Look what it's approaching. It's approaching point 0.2. Point 0.2 in fraction is one fifth. Are you guys seeing that? See, so don't be a robot. Now you know what's up. Now you don't have to depend on any rules or whatever. You can use your, your little brain that God gave you. It's not little, guys. It's a big brain. But, like, <laughs> compared to, like, a whale, a whale has a big brain, too, right? So I'm not, that's not what I, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it as, yeah, I'm not demeaning anyone. All right, last one. Example two. We're done after here. Yeah, she got mad. Uh, do you have X? No, we're good. Miss. Last one. Last one, guys. All right. Last one. Sometimes they'll do it like this. 3X plus 1 times 2X plus 5 over X squared plus 10X plus 5. Same one. Relax. Relax. You don't have to follow everything. You just got to follow the highest degree. What is 3X times 2X? So that's my end behavior. 6x squared over x squared. The x squareds cancel out. What am I going to be approaching? So y equals 6 is a horizontal asymptote. Does that make sense? All right. I think we've covered everything as detailed as we can besides graphing a whole bunch. I think we're good. Did did Was everything explained clearly today, guys? Okay. We're not robots, right? All right. Let's take care of business. We got a delta and that's it. Good job, guys.